Hey everybody, Kyle Houchins, Tech and a Trainer from McNeil, and I have been thinking a lot lately about just some shorter Rhino 7 modeling tutorials to try and shake out some of the dustier corners of my bag of tricks. And um, this one is one that I wanted to share because detailing in Rhino can be kind of tedious and um, in a past life, I spent a lot of time in the toy industry, I spent a lot of time in the entertainment industry and the automotive industry and things like that, and, and spent um, time in what we like to call nernies and greebles, which is this kind of like nonsense detailing that when viewed from way back here and, and shipped back and forth across the screen looks really cool and, and things like that. This kind of stuff is super easy to do in a, like a polygon program like ZBrush or something like that. But Rhino, um, it can be kind of tedious. And I came across uh, by pure necessity because I had a huge project, project that I did for a client for a well-known space brand that shall not be mentioned, um, where several of the objects that I can't talk about were heavily detailed with things like this. And so uh, I wanted to show kind of the process that I developed to do that. It's nothing earth shattering or mind bending, but it is kind of efficient. And I just wanted to show you uh, how I went from this to this pretty efficiently. Um, and uh, we'll go through that process. So let me hide this one and let's focus on this. And basically, if we look at what this is. This is just utter nonsense that I threw together. A lot of it is, um, you know, data that I mirrored and, you know, just, it's just a bunch of curves that I threw together to try and create some sort of visual inf interest. And notice that, you know, it's, it, it kind of looked interesting from here. If we get zoom in on this, you kind of realize that it's utter nonsense. But but the, the fact remains that, you know, we just threw some curves together, we brought out uh, a very simple piece of geometry, and then what I'm going to do is use the split face command. And this is a poly surface, this thing is, is um, you know, a closed volume. And so I'm just going to pick this face, I'm going to accept it, and then instead of entering a split axis, I'm going to pick curves. And I'm going to just select all these guys, and then I'm going to go to the front view so you can see what happens. And I'm going to just say go. And it's going to think for a second, because there are a lot of curves here. And it's going to split up this face into individual little bits and pieces. And it's not going to break up the poly surface. It's going to remain a closed object. If I pick on this thing, you can see that it's still a closed poly surface. And that seems like it'd be kind of counterintuitive, but the the cool thing is is essentially like 85 percent of our work is already done for us now and if i go over here to the extrude surfaces command i can pick parts of this and i can start just pushing and pulling and i can push this in and it's going to just drop that in and then i can grab things like this, and these, and this, grab all of this stuff, and if I use the extrude surfaces as opposed to gumball, it actually moves the surface, and because this is all fairly simple degree one geometry, I can do stuff like this where I pull it in, and it actually does that and I can pull this out and it does that and if I want to make sure that this one matches that one I can go here I can hold an O snap over this corner and snap to that corner and now this face and this face are at the same level consequently I can do the same thing if I want this hole to be the same depth as this surface, I just click it and I'm going to snap to one of these corners and it's going to be the same depth. So that's an easy way to control this stuff and then you can just kind of have fun and say, ooh, this is going to come out here, 
this is going to come out a little bit or maybe it's going to go in a little bit and you know maybe this thing has a little height change on it over here and then I want the same one over here so I'm just going to click this corner or oh snap onto that corner and in a very very short amount of time you can create really pretty interesting pretty quick little details right let's stick this in here and then maybe we pull these guys out a little bit and now we're just playing now we're just having fun instead of like making a cylinder and booleaning it in that's a hard word for me to say um, we can focus on like well what is fun what looks cool what you know does this have a little step in it does it poke out over here and if we don't like that we just undo it and we'll just shove it in and so it works really good for this kind of texture plate stuff and you can see that like pretty quickly we can get something that is fairly interesting now the other thing that I wanted to show is if I wanted to do something like I wanted to array some stuff around here I could go ahead and yeah I could draw a, a square and I could trim it and do all that stuff or I could just go near make a surface split this with that delete this join this in or not actually let's not join it in let's take this and then I'm gonna just grab this drag it up with gumball I'm holding down control to extrude it and then I've got this little piece of geometry that I can go and I'm gonna go to the back side because it's easier to there we go it's easier to array from the back side because I've got a clean thing to deal with so I'm gonna array polar from the center and let's just do I don't know like 15 of them and I'm gonna just slap that around and then I'm gonna just drag the whole thing and I'm just gonna boolean it all together and it's done and so in I don't know how many how long we've been doing this seven eight minutes and six of those with just me blabbering we've got a fairly cool little piece that we can then you know just throw a material on and then we can throw a render on it and if it's too harsh we can soften this a bit with um, edge softening and we can turn this on and that's going to be too heavy so let's go 0 0.01 and let's force it and you can see that it starts to soften the edges a little bit maybe we can go a little bit that's too much that's a little better and so now the rendered piece has little chamfers and little highlights on it and stuff like that now here's a cool trick that not a lot of people know anything that shows up any of these render effects like this this is actually um, being performed on the render mesh and you can see that our render mesh is a little faceted here so let's take this and let's go to mesh and let's go to custom and let's go to details and let's set our maximum distance edge to surface to 0.01 and let's set our maximum edge length to like 0.25 this is a fairly good size part if I'm remembering correctly so we're gonna go ahead and run that and it should clean up the render mesh just a little bit and in this case it's still a little jaggedy so let's do the same thing again and let's preview it and see if it gets any better so that's improving a little bit you can see how that's getting a little better so let's change the maximum edge length to 0.05 we'll preview that we want to get this kind of you know smoothed out so it's not all jaggedy and chossy like that and so you can see if we get enough polygons on the screen by changing our settings over here we get a much smoother result in here so I'm gonna just go ahead and accept that and this gives us a very nice clean render mesh with nice smooth kind of roundy corners and if you went to print this part as is it would look like this except you'd lose all of your edge softening if we run 
extract render mesh. We can pick this object, accept it, and the render mesh gets extracted into its own object. This is a mesh that you can then send to a printer. And you'll get the softened edges. So that saves you a million hours of filleting, a million hours of trying to figure out how to, you know, get rid of that sharpness and, uh, and stuff like that. So if you're prototyping stuff, this is a really cool trick. You can just slap something together really quickly with, with push-pull, you know, this kind of push-pull technique, throw some edge softening on it, extract the render mesh, and then throw the render mesh through the, through the printer and end up with a nice part that's got, like, nice little fillets on it and stuff like that. I usually don't worry too much about that because I go through, you know, by the time you get parts cleaned up out of the printer, the edges get knocked off anyways. But if that's important to you, you can do that and get, get these nice, clean little parts. So that's all I have for you today. Just wanted to share that one with you. Hope you enjoy. My name is Kyle Houchins, Tech and a Trainer for McNeil. Go make great stuff. Thanks. Bye.